Hi there, my name is Adam Nagy and I will be presenting the second part of the introduction to Revit programming. I joined Autodesk back in 2005 and first started supporting the manufacturing product APIs, then AutoCAD related APIs and have also been supporting the AEC product APIs for a few years now. Today we will learn about the Revit API through creating a room renumbering add-in. The way this add-in will work is it will ask the user to keep picking rooms and it will set those rooms number starting with one. It also needs to make sure that two rooms do not have the same number as a result of this renumbering because Revit would not like that. While implementing the add-in we'll see how to find out what exact room parameter needs to be changed, how to pick objects in the user interface and how to find out using filtering if a room is already using the number we are trying to set to another room. But before we start programming, I'll show you quickly how the add-in will work once it's finished. This might make it easier for you to follow what I'm doing while implementing the add-in. As you can see, the room numbers in this drawing are not in order. So I start my command under add-ins, external tools, command, room renumbering and I keep picking rooms. One, two, three. And notice that if a room already has the room number that I'm assigning to the picked room, then that room will get the picked room's number. For example, here is room with number four, but I want this room which currently has the number five to have the number four. And when I pick this room, my add-in swaps the room numbers nicely. And I already finished with the renumbering. You've already learned in Introduction to Revit Programming Part 1 how to create an add-in, and that presentation also contained templates for creating ready-to-run Revit add-ins where you can just add your own code. This is what we are going to use for our project as well. So I just create a new project, File, New Project, select the template, and then name the add-in. And it's done. One really nice thing about these templates is that they also take care of the registration and under-registration of your add-in. When you build your project, then your add-in's manifest file is automatically filled with the correct data and copied over to the right folder so that Revit will load your add-in the next time it started. And if for some reason you do not want Revit to load your add-in, then you can just clean your project, which automatically removes your add-in's manifest file. So we have our add-in's framework now, and we need to start implementing our add-in's functionality. First of all, we need to let the user pick the rooms he wants to renumber. For this, the API provides the necessary functions under UI document selection. Each of these functions have quite a few overloads, so you can use them with different parameters. In our case, we just want to ask the user to keep selecting rooms one by one. Therefore, we use pick object. First of all, we need to get access to the UI document that you can find in the command data parameter. So I say UI document that I find under command data application and active UI document. Then we need a loop inside which we can keep asking the user to pick a room in the user interface. So I start here a loop. Inside this loop, I can keep calling the pick object function. Which returns a reference. A reference object is a stable reference to a geometric object in a Revit model, which is used when creating elements like dimensions. We set the type of object we are interested in and provide a prompt for the user. So the object type would be element and let's provide a prompt
and then the returned value is a reference. If I set the while expression to true, then how will we ever get out of this loop? Well, in case the user cancels picking, Revit throws an operation cancelled exception that we can catch, and this will take us right out of the loop. There is also an operation cancelled exception under the system namespace, so make sure that you are using the correct one under autodesk.revit.exceptions. So I can put here the try catch part. And what I need to catch is autodesk.revit.exceptions operation cancelled exception. You can see that some of the overloads of pick object also requires an object with interface eye selection filter. If you want to specify what exact object types are allowed, then this is the interface the class you need to create must implement. That's what we'll do as well to make sure that the user can only select rooms. So I declare my class here, public class my selection filter, which needs to implement I selection filter. I remove the region because I don't need it here. As you can see, this interface has two methods that can be overridden. One is the allow element, which is used to specify if an element is allowed to be selected, and allow reference, which is used to specify if a reference to a piece of geometry is allowed to be selected. If we were to pass object type face or point on element, in that case the allow reference function would be called. But since we are restricting the selection to elements instead, therefore it's not called and so we can return either true or false, it makes no difference. So I can just return, let's say true. And inside allow element, we return true if the selected element is a room. Which I can check with the is keyword. Also, as you can see, Visual Studio automatically offers adding the namespace that the room uh, class resides in. Now we can use an instance of this class and pass it to pick object. New my selection filter, and it's done. A reference also contains information about the element the geometry is part of, and this is what we need to get to the room object. So, under the selection reference, I will find element, but I need to cast it to room. How can we find the room parameter we need to set in order to change the room number? We can use Revit Lookup for this. The Revit Lookup tool comes with the Revit SDK, which is part of the Revit installer, so you do not need to download anything extra for this. In part 1 you could already have a look at it, and now we will use it to look inside the room object. For this I just need to select a room, then run add-ins, Revit Lookup, Snoop current selection, and then I can see all the parameters it has. Here you find the number. If I check the internal definition, then I can also find the built in parameter name, which is room number. This is what we will need. 
However, in this case we are lucky because the room class also has a dedicated property called number, which makes changing the room number even easier. To keep track of the room number we are assigning to the picked room, we need to create a variable. Let's call it simply room number. And the value will start with 1. Then we use it to set the room number. We also need to convert it to string. And then we just need to keep incrementing it inside the loop. We would need to make sure that no other room is using the number we are trying to assign to the selected room. So we need to search for existing rooms in the database. Whenever you want to get access to any of the database objects, you have to create a filtered element collector object and specify the document and perhaps view that you are searching in. There are loads of Revit filtering classes that help you get back the exact object you are looking for. You should narrow down the set of objects as far as possible using the Revit API and only then use generic API including link queries to filter down the selection to the specific element you want, because this way your code will be much faster. In our case we can get back the element we need only using Revit API. So first we need to create a filtered element collector. We can also specify the object type we are looking for using the off class function, which dramatically reduces the element set and so makes further filtering quicker. In this case, however, we cannot look for a room, but can look for its base class, which is called enclosure. Then we can narrow down the collection to the exact room we are looking for using where passes, which requires a filter that is based on a specific rule. A rule requires three parameters, a provider that returns the parameters value, an evaluator that tells Revit how we are comparing the value, and the value itself, in our case a string that we are comparing to. In this case, we are checking if the room number parameter of a room equals to the string we pass in. As I mentioned, uh, we need to start with a filtered element collector object. So let's declare it here. Filtered element collector. And we need to pass in the document we are searching in, which is under UI document document. Then we can narrow down the search to a specific object type using the of class function, so we just need to pass in the type. You may remember that we cannot use the room class, but we can use its base class, which is the enclosure. So you can either use this, but there's another option, using the where passes and then passing in a specific filtering class called the room filter. It's up to you whichever you choose, uh, both of them have similar results. And then we need to specify which specific room we are after using a parameter filter. So we need to collect the where passes again. And this time we'll pass in our own filter, called filter. And this, this will be filtering based on an element parameter, therefore we need an element parameter filter, which needs to be based on a specific filter rule, so we also need to specify that, let's just call it rule. The room number parameter is a string, so we need a filter string rule. Create a string rule.
And this rule needs three things mainly. First of all, a provider, which will provide the value that we are checking. We need an evaluator, which specifies how we are checking the value. Evaluator. Then we also need the value we are comparing to, which is the room number to string. And we can also specify if this search is case sensitive or not. In this case, let's just say it's not case sensitive. So first of all, we need a provider. And the provider will be a parameter value provider that will grab the value from the room's room number parameter. So it needs to be a parameter value provider. And for this you need the ID, the element ID of the parameter that we are checking. So I need to create a new element ID object and pass in the built-in parameter value. Built-in parameter value, which will be the room number. And then we check if this value equals to the value we pass into the rule. So we need a filter string equals. So this will be the evaluator. And that's it. As you can see, now we have all the parameters for the rule, which will be used by the filter. And then to get the list of objects that pass the filtering, we can use two elements. So collector, two elements. As you can see, it will return an I list of elements. I list. Let's just call it rooms. And if we found a room that is already using the number we want to assign to the picked room, then we will swap its room number with it. So we need to check the count of the returned rooms. It should be either 0 or 1, because two rooms should not have the same number. So it's enough just checking if there are at least 1. Then also we need to convert the result to a room. So on the rooms we get the first object and then set its room number to the value of the selected room this number. And since the project template we used sets the regeneration option to manual as you can see it here, regeneration option menu, which is the suggested one. Therefore, to make sure that the room number changes are visible for the user, we need to call regenerate on the active document once we change the room numbers. So as you can see, we changed one of the rooms number. We are changing the picked rooms number. Now we can regenerate the document. So UI document, document, regenerate. So we are finished with the implementation and can test the add-in. So let's just start debugging our add-in. And let's load the document where the rooms are room numbers are not in order. Just make these labels a bit bigger so it's easier to see what's going on. 
And under add-ins, external tools, there's my command, re room renumbering. So let's just start it. We can start picking the rooms. One, two, three, four. And as you can see, it's working fine. And I already finished renumbering the rooms. You could also use the add-in manager that comes with Revit to test your add-in. As you can see, it can help you create your add-in manifest file. It enables you to run your external commands without an add-in manifest. And it also lets you load and unload your add-in within the same Revit session. Let's see how it works. When debugging a Revit add-in, you cannot do edit and continue. In other words, you cannot modify your code while it is loaded in Revit. Also, you cannot stop your project, modify it, compile it, and then reload it into the same Revit session through the debugger. If you think you would really need this feature, then you could have a look at the Add-in Manager tool, which you can use to register your add-in and also load and unload it in the same Revit session. But in order to use this tool, you have to make sure that in case of all your external commands and external applications, both the transaction mode and regeneration option are set to the same value either manual or automatic. Also, when changing the transaction mode or regeneration option, make sure that your code is modified appropriately. For example, you cannot use regenerate in case of automatic regeneration option. That's why I commented this out. As you can see, when changing the code and recompiling, Let's do it here, let's change it to 6. Compile. Then using the add-in manager, the automatic mode, because those are the options we used, I can hit load and then find the DLL of my add-in, open. Then all the commands available are listed. I can select one of them and then just hit run. And as you can see, the latest version of my add-in is being used. Let's just cancel it now. If you not only want to see the changes, but also debug into your add-in, then you can use debug attached to process. Make sure that you're only attaching to the managed code, otherwise you could not detach from Revit without quitting the Revit process. So we attached to Revit. The add-in manager also has a faceless mode, which basically runs the last executed command again, which in my case is the room renumbering command, so I just hit it. As you can see, the breakpoint that I set is hit nicely. Let's just continue. And now if I want to change the code of my add-in, I can just go detach. Now I change the code, recompile, and then attach to Revit again. As you can see, I can both hit the breakpoint and also I can see that the latest version of my add-in is being used. Also, since we want to modify our add-in while Revit is running, we need to make sure that it is not registered. In other words, edit, uh, Revit will not load it the normal way and therefore I needed to add it the add-in manifest file and commented out both my application and command. Because if it's loaded by Revit the usual way, in that case Visual Studio would prevent you from overwriting your module with the latest build. Here is again the list of resources outside the Revit SDK. First of all, Jeremy Tamik has a really good blog that is updated with new and interesting articles almost every day. 
and also contains further samples for all the API functions we use today. Next we have the Developer Center, where you find a good overview of all API technologies that we support, and also, if you are interested, you will find some free .NET training material for you to work through. Then, of course, we have the various Autodesk discussion groups for you to check. If you need training, then please do check out our API training schedules, accessed via the autodesk.com slash API training URL. Here you can also find many webcasts on specific topics, such as family MEP and structure APIs. And finally, if you are interested in joining our ADN program, then please take a look at autodesk.com slash join ADN, where you can find out about all the benefits that ADN membership has to offer. I hope you found this presentation useful. Have a nice day.